Yo, what's up, y'all? This is Lyris. Says welcome to Coffee and Convo. I appreciate you guys for stopping by and taking the time out to check this out. This is going to be our first episode with us um, doing the video podcast along with the audio. So you'll see some of the updates, uh, you know, on my um, YouTube. If you haven't been there yet, it's I underscore am Lyris's. Um, on youtube or just search for lyricists or you can also go to my website i am lyricist.com or also you can go to my company's website uh sergey music group so i hope everybody's doing well once again i'm your man lyricist we are updating everything so this is the morning show um, i told you guys a while back that it was going to be coming so i'm going to be you know focusing on my motivation and uh positive things not that you know i don't ever talk about positive things on my other podcasts uh, but this is more um you know tailored towards motivation and you know entrepreneur you know uh building you know uh dialogue so yeah uh my new podcast is going to be called the lyricist podcast so you can check out there we're talking about all types of current events music entertainment you know makes basically it's going to be topic based but um yeah you can check that out and it's going to have uh, a lot of special guests uh, my co-hosts will be um with me as well so we're building a team we're building the business and we're taking um our media aspect of sergey music group to a whole nother level so um if you don't know, I did release a new EP in October. I want to say October 27th. It's been doing awesome. So I thank everybody that took the time out to check that out. So, um, you know, let's hop into the topic. And it's um, more of a freestyle topic. It's been a while since I've freestyled a topic. So I didn't come to the show with anything planned because, you know, we're testing everything out. But, you know being dedicated when you say you're going to do something do it when you say that you're going to elevate elevate and like i said you know um with the growth of my businesses you know me growing and evolving as an individual you know i've committed myself to the uh the grind and um being able to kind of look past some of the hardships that I had over the last couple of years and dedicate myself to getting back on track with, you know, the things I love to do, whether it's my music or, you know, entertainment as a whole, I even step it back into the podcasting realm. You know, this has been a really, really good year for me. This has, this has been a good time for me. I, I think I can say that 2023 has been a comeback year. So, you know what? Fuck it. Let's talk about comebacks. Let's talk about comebacks. I grind, man. I grind. You know, I got Kobe's, uh, you know, you know, picture up here. And, uh, you know, what it says is learn to love the hate. Embrace it. Enjoy it. You earned it. Everyone is entitled to their own opinion and everyone should have one about you. Haters are good. Uh, haters are a good problem to have. Nobody hates the good ones. They hate the great ones. So I've been living like, you know, I've been embodied in my comeback. You know, I can say that from 2020 into like 22, those were slump years for me. Slump years, major slump years. And anybody that's been part of my life knows that it has been rough. But I I I, I gotta take the time out and thank everybody that's that's really been rocking with me over that time period. Because you know, I didn't give up. I stayed the course. I did what I was supposed to do, but man, was it rough. You know, I'm, I'm glad I didn't release my book because it's some more I could add to that book that, you know, about motivation and digging deep because I had to dig deep. I had to reconnect with, you know, parts of myself that was dormant. You know, I had to rediscover 
who was lyricist. I had to rediscover, you know, who was David Young. Because it was a lot of crazy changes, man. You know, my personal life was kind of crazy. You know, now I can say that for me, 2023, being able to get my business back on uh, track, being able to get back on track as an artist. And now that, you know, I'm in the realm of being a creative, a content creator, who, who would have thought that I would have actually sunk into the uh, position of being a content creator? And I jumped at that challenge as well. It wasn't easy. Because I thought, like, okay, yeah, you know, I, I, I can't I can't hang with these young cats, man. I can't do what these guys do with all this, you know, you know, create 10 pieces of content every single day. I'm like, I run a business. I run multiple businesses. So having to find time to create content every single day and as much as possible, I didn't think it was possible. And then I found myself doing it. <laughs> I thought we know I was doing it. So I, I literally have unreleased episodes for the podcast for coffee and convo and i'm like shit i've been creating this content and had no idea so even after i you know drop this you guys are going to get more episodes that's unreleased <laughs> so um coffee and convo it helped me filter through some of my my thoughts whether it was you know negative positive affirmation Coffee and Convo was a big part of me being able to make my comeback. Being able to step into a relationship, you know, a partnership that allowed me to grow and get in the position to reconnect with myself with the utmost support has been pivotal to my growth as well. So you know, finding myself in a relationship with a beautiful person that accepts me for who I am. And, you know, of course we have our challenges here and there, but it's not often, you know, because at the end of the day, we're able to sit down, have coffee together, bounce ideas off of each other and remain supportive. I didn't have that in my previous relationships. So being able to be with someone that supports me no matter what helped my mindset helped me, you know, reconnect and move in a positive direction and overall grow as a creative. So, and on the other side of that, we have, you know, my newborn son, Aiden, you know, which is also a positive, you know, um, addition to my life, which helps me focus you know, move forward and help me commit to the comeback. My 13 year old daughter, you guys all know about Anaya. If you've been rocking with me since like 2009, um, you know, early Sergey media cast days with my boy Jarrell, you know, um, my 13 year old daughter, you know, you guys know how I feel about her, you know, super positive. One of the main reasons why. I've worked like crazy most of my life because I wanted to make sure she had things that I never had. And my son, David, Jr., or David II, you know, yeah, he had some rough times. You know, we had some rough times together. We have some rough times, you know, that we're still working through. But I love him to death. And, you know, he's a smart kid. Makes me happy as well. You know, I was coaching his football team. And I was proud to see him get out there. And, you know, tap it to his potential. And it was potential that I didn't even know he had, honestly. Because it's like, you know, as a parent, you know, like, yeah, you know, let's try it out. Let's keep him busy, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, he has the ability to actually play. <laughs> you know, he, he tapped into his skills and, you know, took it to a whole level. So I'm definitely proud of him. And, you know, I'm proud of my kids, you know, being a father of three and, you know, seeing how they are and, and you know, um, 
seeing where things are going to be that for them in the future is a positive thing as well. But I couldn't get to where I need to be without committing to the comeback and making sure that I stay the course. Because when it's all said and done, you know, I'm doing this for my kids. I'm making sure that I can leave them with a positive legacy. Because I can't say that, you know, a positive legacy was left for me. So it's my job as, you know, as the head of my family to build something and to build something great. So I almost committed to a slump. And that was something new to me because I've always been motivated. I've always been a self-starter. I've always been the individual that can pull myself out of the dumps rather quickly. And it was harder for me to do for a couple of years. My health was down. My physical health, my mental health and everything was down. Uh, My confidence wasn't as high which was weird for me because I've always been 100% confident in who I was as an individual. So this was new to me, not being able to tap into that space where, you know, I was constantly motivated. But I wasn't afraid to go out and get the help. I wasn't I wasn't afraid to... I wasn't afraid to commit to bettering myself. So for me, I I had to reach that, you know, fuck it, let's do it moment. And I reached out, I got help, spoke to different individuals, start surrounding myself with people that actually give a fuck. Because if you're dealing with people that that don't care about your mental health, then you find yourself slipping into the abyss. And I didn't allow myself to slip into the abyss. Even though I felt tired, I felt defeated, I felt lost, I didn't commit to the slump. I committed to the comeback. And I felt like the comeback was necessary. Because how could I ever leave my children anything if I accept defeat? And as long as I draw oxygen, I have to fight. I have to do what's necessary. I have to make sure that I rise above my circumstances. So I have to be an example. That's a part of your legacy as well, is making sure that you can be an example to your children. To those that follow you, you want to be a positive example of okay, this is what I did to get, you know, this is what I've done to get through these situations. It's not gonna be easy. But life's not supposed to be easy. Things tend to get a little easier when you make better decisions and put yourself in a you know good situation. But that all that all comes with time. So I've committed to the comeback and like my idol says here is everyone is entitled to their own opinions and everyone should have one about you. Haters are a good problem to have. Nobody hates the good ones. They hate the great ones. And when you've mastered the things in your life that you're comfortable with, that you love, and you become great at it, expect the haters to come. Don't get so caught up in the point to where it is you feel like you have to always give them a response. The response is continuing to be great. Being able to bounce back and come back from slumps and be at the top of your game just really shows how great you are. Nobody ever hates on the good ones. They only hate on the great ones. 
And one thing that I piss off a hater is if they see you in a slump and you come out swinging and you're at a higher level than where you were before you hit the slump, they're going to hate it. And the reason why they hate it is because, God damn, this motherfucker was supposed to stay down. He was not supposed to be able to come back. How did he come back? And how did he come back greater than what he was before? Learn this from your slumps. A loss is not a loss if you turn it into a lesson. Think about how you got there. Think about why you got there. And think about how to never return there. As long as you breathe, any moment in your life is a lesson. If you're in a slump, figure out how to be better coming out of that slump. Sharpen your tools. Investigate. Study. Become a student of life. Study what happened. And commit to never making that mistake again. Because it matters. It's the rest of your life you're talking about. It means something. So. People can't hate on people that's just good. They do just enough. You know. I call that mediocrity. But when you're great. Everyone speaks about greatness. Everybody recognizes greatness. 48 Laws of Power. The power of reputation. If you haven't read the book, read the book. I recommend it. Because when it's all said and done, whoever you have been in this world, whatever you've built, whether it's a positive reputation or a negative reputation, people are going to know and they're going to speak on it and if it's a positive reputation and it's something that's great I can tell you this right now your haters would do all the promotion for you you would never have to do anything never because when it's all said and done they hate you so much that they can't sleep at night they hate you so much that every conversation is about you. It's free promotion. Take it. Free marketing. Who cares? Let them hate. But that's how you know that you're on the right track. Is when you got haters. And those haters are willing to talk about you. And that's the beauty. Of rising above. And coming back. From whatever slump you may be in. Slumps don't last forever. It don't have to. Especially if you like the feeling of winning. So with that being said, I thank you guys for checking out Coffee and Convo. Make sure you go to my website, IamLyricist.com. Um, also, you can drop by SirJMusicGroup.com. If you want to get caught up on any of the podcasts, any of the music, anything that's Sergey is there. Uh, anything that's Lyricist is at IamLyricist.com. And I thank you guys for checking out Coffee and Convo today. We're going to be doing more episodes where you can um, actually see it visually on YouTube. Just go to I underscore M Lyricist uh, on YouTube and or any platform. Uh, we, we're super heavy on um, on um, Spotify as well. Sorry, Spotify, TikTok, and um, Apple as well. So I thank you guys um, until the next episode. Have a great day.